This episode of Drop the Dead Donkey was first shown in November 91, in a week when Tesco's and Safeways decided to open on Sundays, Mrs Thatcher called for a referendum on Europe, and her daughter was slow paying her poll tax. to see that last Friday was the anniversary of Mrs. Thatcher's resignation and we did nothing to mark it. Yes, we did. We had a piss-up. <laughs> Four hours in the Turk's head. No, I mean we didn't do a tribute to her. What are you talking about? Henry put on that Thatcher mask and sang I Will Survive on the karaoke machine. <laughs> Two hours late! Not leaves on the line, not the wrong kind of snow. Not a swan flying into power lines, but mice gnawing through the cables. <laughs> what next? The airwigs in the points, goblins in the signal boxes, or even more extraordinary, delays due to trains on the lines! <laughs> From now on, I'm bringing the car. Have a coffee, Henry. Oh. Alex, David, Dave, coffee? Yes, thanks, Sally. Sally. Someone waiting for you at reception. Thank you very much, John. How come a Christianity consists mostly of giving people coffee? You've seen the size of the cross around her neck this morning? If it gets any bigger, she'll be carrying it over her shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> what are those? Tarot cards. They are really fascinating. Oh, come on, they're mumbo-jumbo. Now, look, I'm a rational person, right? Wrong. Wrong. Yeah, well, anyway, last week we were filming and this old woman dealt out the cards and predicted that Jerry, the cameraman, would have an accident. And he did. Yeah, he had an accident because you conned him into wearing a fur coat at an animal libber's rally. <laughs> anyway, I think they're interesting. Do you want to see how it works? Yeah, OK. Um, George, cut those, will you? That's it. Now, of course, I'm only using the major arcana. Mm. And the four most interesting cards here are the Sun, Death, Chariot and the Juggler. Well, I see. George will die of sunstroke while I'm juggling in his chariot. <laughs> George! Margaret's on the phone. Actually, you know, it is really interesting. It does appear that there's a major disaster waiting around the corner for George. Well, of course there is. He's George. See? <laughs> Gus just rang from the health farm. So to remind everyone that Sir Royston has strong trade links with Iran and that Salman Rushdie is a very small story. All right, Alex. I think that Margaret has finally left George. It's awful in there. He is really upset. Mm, she must have got the video recorder then. Henry, believe it or not, some people get upset when their marriage ends. Well. So let's just try and be sensitive, OK? All right, George. Yes. Oh, George, here, um, have a cup of coffee. Oh, thanks. I hear you've ditched the old woman at last. <laughs> Best thing you could have done. Find yourself a nice young bit of totty, eh? <laughs> yes. Well done, Perez de Cuellar. Big surprise for you. Oh, you're pregnant by the Archangel Gabriel. <laughs> to meet a man who's helped change my life in the short time I've known him. One of America's leading evangelists, Earl Johnson. I'm very pleased to meet y'all. <laughs> you must be George Dent. Sally said some awfully complimentary things about you. Has she? Earl's over here as part of his festival of faith. Yes. When one or two are gathered together in his name, the Lord is there. When one or two thousand are gathered together in his name, then Earl Johnson's there as well. So you used to work in advertising then, Earl? Yeah, so you know my career then, Henry. No, but I know advertising bullshit when I hear it. <laughs> yes, I was an advertising executive until I was visited by the mighty and matchless word of the baby Jesus. Woo! God be praised! <laughs> 
Yes, um, delightful though this is, Earl. We were actually rather busy trying to compile a news broadcast. And that's exactly what I wanted to talk to you about, George. Now, I'm holding a week of rallies out at your QPR soccer stadium. And frankly, George, I have to say that this is a big news event and we're offering you the exclusive. Uh, well, actually, I'm not sure we'd strictly consider this news. George, Jesus dying for our sins is the biggest news there's ever been now, isn't it? Well, um, but I mean, it did happen over 2,000 years ago. <laughs> have you tried the Daily Express? <laughs> uh, besides, uh, we do have very strict rules on religious broadcasting. Ah, yes, I've seen your so-called religious broadcasting. A plump Welshman singing loudly in front of castles. <laughs> now, my rallies, George, reflect the glory of the Almighty. And they have an extremely televisual laser show. I think we're going to have to say... No. Perhaps the two of us could discuss it over lunch sometime. <laughs> well, no. George... I can't begin to tell you how much I appreciate you sharing your incredibly valuable time with me. Sally, brought you a present. One of our glad not to be gay sweatshirts and a matching straight as great baseball cap. Thank you. Isn't he inspirational? He's more full of bollocks than Tom Jones's wife runs. <laughs> he was the last thing George needed. He's really going through it. As the tarot predicted. Uh, Damien, <laughs> shut up. But it did. You, uh, you want to do my fortune then, Madame Alcarty? Not that I believe in it or anything. OK, well, cut those. There you go. OK. <laughs> Your future laid out in these cards. <laughs> So, um, what's that one exactly? The, uh, the skeleton with the sickle. <laughs> That's death. Uh -huh. And uh, the corpse hanging from the gallows. The uh, hanged man. Right. Damien, some bloke from the Path Lubbock guys read your smoking story. Says the best it can do you is two diseased lungs and a jar full of suppurating larynxes. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Dave, have you seen this stuff? What's up? Oh, for God! I just don't! That's the hand Damien dealt me. It looked awful. I had death, the hanged man, and another card he didn't explain to me, but the bloke was carrying a very long knife. Probably the vasectomist. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you don't really believe all this junk, do you? No, of course not. I'm just interested, that's all. Yeah, well, if I could possibly drag you back to the mundane world, can we get on? Now, um... The government is issuing this leaflet today about AIDS, warning against promiscuous sexual behaviour. So, Dave... You want me to handle it? Uh, no, I want you to read it. <laughs> I am responsible, OK? I do not go in for casual sex. Oh, I see. And I suppose that the temp in the stationery cupboard at the office party was a meaningful relationship. <laughs> Could we stop talking about sex in the stationery cupboard? Uh, more fuss about Thatcher and the referendum. Mm, ironic, isn't it? She talks complete bollocks for 11 years and we're all obliged to listen. And the moment she starts to talk sense, everyone tells her to shut up. <laughs> anyway, there's still lots of stuff on these uh, shady businessmen giving her millions. Oh, yes, Gus rang to say Sir Royston felt that was a very small story. Oh, I don't believe it. Go and tell George. <laughs> George, we've got to do something about Gus. Margaret. She's left. I don't know why. It's not as if she's got someone else. Well, that's good. Yes. She said I put her off men for life. <laughs> George, perhaps you'd better just take the day off. It's not been a good year, you know, Alex. My suspected ulcer, my rabies scare, <laughs> my daughter's five court appearances. <laughs> and I mean, what are the odds against a bit off a jumbo jet landing on your roof? <laughs> well, some things are improving, aren't they, George? I mean, at least you've got all that sewage out of your basement now. <laughs> I suppose so. God, 
Never thought we'd actually split up. I mean, all right, I know the physical side's been a bit quiet since... since... well, for quite some time, actually. <laughs> but what's the point in any of it? George, I saw you looking upset, so I thought you might find solace in that marvellous passage from Revelations. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Thank you, Sally. Look, George, I know it feels like you've hit rock bottom right now, and, well, it will take time. But things are bound to improve eventually. You'll see, gradually, life will start to seem a little bit brighter. Yes. Yes, you're right. George, your wife's solicitor just rang. She wants the house. <laughs> Carol Thatcher defaulting on her poll tax thing. Shall I put it in the running order? I mean, it's not really a news story, is it? No, not really. Shall I put it in just to annoy her? Yeah. <laughs> Look, um, purely out of interest, uh, that tarot hand you dealt me, exactly what did it foretell? Well, basically, death by drowning. You had the water card. Right. I see. <laughs> it's a load of old rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. It's all boulder dash. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Mind you, I didn't think that when I came back from Haiti that time. No, my cameraman, Patty, got cursed one day by one of their witch doctors, and not long afterwards, he met a most horrible fate. He joined Sky, didn't he? <laughs> After that, he disappeared in Gambia. They think he was eaten by crocodiles. They just found one arm touching a claim form for expenses. <laughs> Cheers, Henry. Statement from number 10. Major's not going to get drawn into a slanging match with Thatcher. Well, apparently he was furious with her over that interview she did for ITN. Yeah, I heard he was so angry he went bright grey. <laughs> yes, all right. Now, Freddie Mercury. I think we should take a Christian attitude. Absolutely. And point out that AIDS is God's punishment for being gay. Oh, oh you're just sick. sick. I suppose diabetes is God's punishment for liking sugar. <laughs> and cancer is God's punishment for living near Sellafield. God's punishment for inventing television is Jeremy Beadle. Yeah. <laughs> we could get on, please. George, another message from Earl Johnson, Bishop of Bollocks, banging on about his rally. <laughs> Anything else? Oh, yes, there's a big report on the divorce rate going up. <laughs> but it's probably not that important. It's all right, Alex. I'm going to have to face up to it. Get used to being on my own. Stop being reliant on others. That sounds like a good idea, George. Yes. Margaret suggested it on the phone last night. <laughs> I'm going to look for some activities outside work. You should, yes. Yes. I haven't slept for a week. The world I've known for 20 years lies shattered around me, and I see no reason in living, but, on the other hand, I am going to take up badminton. <laughs> I might as well slip my wrist. George, George, that is not the solution. Oh, squash is a much better game. <laughs> As you get a better quality of crumpet in the clubhouse, especially if you like them sweaty. <laughs> Henry, does anything tell you that you are not quite on the right wavelength here? George, I've written out a couple more texts for you. I thought they might help. Oh, thank you, Sally. I did read the others you gave me, and, well, I must admit they did make me wonder whether there's something missing from my life. Well, that's great. And if you want to talk to me about it, George, you know where I am. Thanks. Typical religious tactics. Get them when they're down. Then get them hooked on this recycled Hebrew soap opera. The truth is in that book, Henry. Damien, these tarot cards, all this uh, daft death by drowning stuff. Mm. Um, I don't suppose there was any indication of time scale, was there? <laughs> Fate could strike at any time. Why'd you ask? Well, it's just that I'm due to take this uh, weekend jaunt on the ferry to Boulogne, and um, I just thought it was very funny, that's all. You can't shake my faith, Henry. From now on, I live my life by God's laws. Does that mean you have to give up shagging long-distance lorry drivers, then? <laughs> it won't work. Oh, 
You're no fun anymore! Damien, going back to these tarot cards... Are you two? Why don't you stop fighting around with that adolescent codswallop? And do some decent work for a change! <laughs> what was all that about? It's obvious. With Sally being impossible to provoke, he's got a massive surplus of bile. Bloody thing! <laughs> there goes the drinks machine. Good day to you, Sally. Oh. Good day to you oh. all. It's a pleasure and privilege to see you all again. Not quite. How did you get in, Earl? There are no closed doors to those who fight the devil. I don't think George wants to see you, Earl. Uh, it's all right, Alex. Um, I'll have George, I haven't had the pleasure of seeing your cameras at my rally. Well, as I think I explained, I'm afraid we can't. We're governed by the rules on religious broadcasting. Right. Well, I hear what you're saying, George, and I clearly see what your problem is here. Oh. Good. Your problem is that you are possessed by Satan. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, with respect, I Those who oppose the work of the Lord are on the side of Lucifer. Do you want to go hand in hand with the devil? Well, ideally, no. <laughs> uh, but I have to say, we can't cover this rally. You see, the... George has chosen to follow Satan. All he's saying is we can't cover your stupid rally. Do you people realize who I am? I am Earl Johnson, who had the top-rated Sunday primetime evangelical show in Cincinnati for over five years. I am Earl Johnson, who the Lord gave a 28 audience share in the Nielsen AR of 14.2. <laughs> I am Earl Johnson, who had the devil not fill the minds of the foolish with lascivious allegations would have had a show coast to coast on a major network. But he was at work there, as he is at work here. I can see the number of the beast engraved on your foreheads. Is that no 71 or 081 number? <laughs> you people. It doesn't surprise me that uh, your ravenous sexual appetites have destroyed your marriage. Or that you dabble in the dark arts. It doesn't surprise me that your private life is a cesspool of sexual corruption and excess. Flattery will get you nowhere. Don't be tempted by anger, Earl. I'm leaving this sewer before the naked putrefaction overwhelms me with the stench. No chance of your covering that rally? <laughs> no. <laughs> you burn for eternity, George! As well as Safeway and Tesco and... <laughs> that guy is definitely one flying buttress short of a cathedral. That's ridiculous. What did he mean, my ravening sexual appetites? And no judge of character. <laughs> oh, God, what a day. Deborah's headmaster rang. She's been suspended again for playing cops and robbers. Apparently, she arrested three first formers, beat them up, made them sign false confessions, then locked them in the boiler room. <laughs> Talent scouts from the Met will be on to you soon, George. By the way, David, I've got a bone to pick with you. Apparently, in our report on Major's first year in power, you used the same photograph for him being furious, for him relaxing, and for him being triumphant. Someone spotted it, did they? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, no, but it's no excuse for cutting corners. <laughs> oh, God, Sally's got another Bible. No, no, that's, uh, that's mine. Mm. <laughs> well, increasingly, I've been feeling incomplete and, well, a bit lost, really, and I found dipping into this really comforting. Oh, brilliant. We've got two of the buggers now. <laughs> this is great news. I'm so pleased, George. And any time you want to talk about it, I'll be there for you. But now I am going to Earl's rally where I will apologise to him on behalf of you all. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. The 
good Lord guides our marketing division. Now, this is our angel Gabriel doorstop. I do so admire the work you're doing, Al. I just feel so ashamed of the way my colleagues treated you. That's no matter. And don't you worry. Uncle Earl will protect you from those media deviants. I'm sure you will. At the rally tonight, I, I felt so secure. And when we all knelt down to pray, it was like being a little girl again. Shall we pray now? Oh, yes. Kneel down, Sally. <laughs> oh, Lord, let her be as the loving hind in the pleasant row. Let her breasts satisfy thee at all times. I'm oh, sorry? Proverbs 5, 19. Oh, I didn't know that there were breasts in the Bible. The Lord, as surely as he created our minds, created our bodies, Sally. And he loves our bodies. Yes, yes, of course. And he loves all the workings of our bodies. <laughs> all the movings and pumpings and throbbings <laughs> and spurtings. <laughs> and he wants us to look on their magnificence. Sally, gaze upon the glory of the Lord. <laughs> you can't deny the you history of the United States. Look, hundreds of historical look, look, figures. Look, 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 I am a logical person, okay? I've thought all this through, and this occult stuff is obviously complete crap. Okay. Okay. You say that, but Nancy Reagan used astrology when she was governing America. Thank you. Hey, listen, do you think it's true about her and Frank Sinatra? Oh, I don't know. It's difficult to imagine it happening here, isn't it, eh? Norma Major and Engelbert Humperdinck. <laughs> Norma Major and Engelbert Humperdinck? You sure? <laughs> no, 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 George, we were just... Never mind. Message from Gus. Sir Royston feels that Labour's divisions over Europe is a very big story. Oh, and Dave, the ferry company just rang. There's no way you're going to get a refund on that Boulogne ticket. Not at this notice. Well, I just thought I'd stay at home for the weekend, you know. The bedroom needs repapering, and uh, I've been meaning to put that spice rack up in the kitchen for weeks. I wanted to catch a very uh, interesting documentary on Radio 3 on Saturday night. It's uh, about Gustav Mahler. <laughs> Sally, Sally, do you think we could have that chat? Well, I've been turning to the Bible more and more, and, well, I know you're the only person here I can really count on to be sympathetic. Oh! Fuck off, George! <laughs> I'm sorry. I am sick of your weak, whinging, self-pitying, self-obsessed mewling. I tell you, Margaret's well out of it. Now, Joy, stop doing your nails. Get me a cup of coffee. So, Sally, how's the Christianity coming along? Don't talk to me about that mumbo-jumbo. And don't you dare broadcast anything about that despicable man and his rallies. Well, they've been postponed. Apparently he fell down and injured his knee. His groin. <laughs> <laughs> well, it says here... It, it was, his... was his groin. It received a visitation from the angel Gabriel. <laughs> So, Sally, your God-bothering days are over! Oh, do shut up, Methuselah! George, I want to talk about my billing and my clothes allowance, and where the hell's that coffee? Great to have you back. <laughs> <laughs> More on this government drive on sex education. Kenneth Clark is going to make a speech promoting contraception. Oh, that's a good idea. Kenneth Clark's the most convincing argument there is for contraception. What about your Deborah? What sort of sex education is she getting at school? Well, it seems to mostly involve Hell's Angels. Oh, she's such a worry. The police picked her up last night for joyriding. Luckily, she's okay. She drove the car into a wall. Oh, God, did they charge her? No, well, seeing as how it was my car. And besides, they seem quite keen to get her out of the police station. Music